The Modern Jeeper Show, the show about Jeeps, Jeeping, and Jeepers. Hey, Modern Jeepers, this is another episode of the Modern Jeepers Show with me, Madsen from Metal Cloak and Mr. Modern Jeeper, Corey Osborne. Hey, buddy. Hey, and Rockstar Jeep Girl, Jesse. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yes, it's morning. This is a, unusual for us. I mean, we've done a, some around 10 o'clock when you guys are on the road and that early afternoon, but for all of our listeners, we try to go to this thing live on Thursdays, and you didn't get it today because we were a little busy on schedules, so we decided to do Thursday morning. So it's like 7.30 my time, 8.30 your time. And, you know, for most people, we're, the world's getting started, but it's a little tougher getting the the game face on this early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of different. Um, you know, when we all have we all have competing schedules, as our, our listeners know, and um, we're actually home for a few days in between events. And we again, we're all so gosh, we're so amazingly busy that it's. Um, it's such a good problem to have, but when we're juggling, trying to, to unpack, unwind, reload, reset, and, uh, yeah, uh, we're just, it's funny how our schedules are uh, all over the place. And in the morning, it's hard for when you work at home for a living. Yeah. Yeah. This whole world of, of, you know, listening to people that are doing the work for home, WFH, and uh i'm doing it for the last year and a half and actually declaring how much they prefer it and how much more productive they are yeah I, you know i don't know that maybe there's ways of doing that but i've got three kids working from home is not productive it is no, not productive being able to sit and focus <laughs> and have nothing else going on is productive you know there's there even though i'm in here in the room and i can i can work on it the whole idea that guys don't come in here daddy's working <laughs> yeah daddy's no working. what's that <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's funny yeah. even for, so, you know, I've had uh, um, some folks here working on the, the landscaping stuff that I've finally been trying to get a hold of and broken sprinklers and all that kind of stuff. And it's weird when they're here. So there'll be, you know, five or six, seven guys out in the front yard. Then I don't want to go outside because I don't want to, not I don't want to bother them. But then I also, I want to see what they're doing too. So it's very non-productive <laughs> for me. <laughs> When I have people here at the house, I feel like I, I don't know. He's like creeping out the window. Let's just <laughs> let's just put it out there. He's creeping them on him. Yeah. Is it in there looking through the, the slats? What is he? What are they doing? <laughs> yeah, what are they doing now? What are I, don't, doing? I wanted them to see that I'm watching them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, nosy, the nosy one. So I this is starting to get a bit long, there, buddy. Like, what's your plan? I, I don't know. Um, well, I trimmed it really short. The Not the last time I cut his hair, but the time before that. Because I was just like trying some new stuff. And I think it got as short. I could see it in his face. He's like, damn, it's pretty short. But I was like, yeah. okay, well, this time I'll just cut the sides and leave it long. So he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I mean, it's it's kind of getting too long. <laughs> I This is what, like seven Neat. or eight months is all. So I could shave it off and start. Well, over. you know, you you've got to, but see now you got to get into the game. Like talk to John about the different oils, right? Like, you know, John has had a John Slayton for all of our guys, one of our one of our team members. He's had a beard since I think he was like fourteen or something. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like funny. he's he's never never not had it. Um, and but so the oils and the beard oils and the different sense that they have and different things you can put into your so it's like there's a whole there's a whole world now around beards and beard oils and all this stuff to take care of it yeah it's funny and i i don't know i um i'm jury still out i don't i don't i'm i think it does make me look older and because it's white and gray it just yeah, you're all know. white right <laughs> yeah santa claus which is looking thing which is so funny because you know your your hair isn't Right. You haven't gone all white up here, but that is just like white, white, white. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, I tell you, doing some of our adventures that we've been doing and even shows when it's really hot or if I'm getting really dirty, it's not that fun. Yeah. Um, it, it just gets in the way and it's, I, 
stuff in it and yeah you food, just need food, it yeah, food cutting it <laughs> well you know yeah. keep growing it and then come december you just have to come out here and play santa claus for my kids right right i can do that i can do yeah. that we can just braid yeah. it get them braid, braid it i'll braid it <laughs> <laughs> i gotta do the two braid thing i want to i want the two braids. yes braid. yeah. the little devil yeah. balls that go on the bottom of them yeah See? yeah nope. too bad you're not a biker nope <laughs> nope <clears throat> so we were just we just got back from all for fun um and the first four days were i, I was gonna call it not for fun um <laughs> it did nothing but rain for the first three four days we were there oh my and God. uh staying in a tent in in pouring down rain for multiple days is um it's it's weird yeah it's not that fun it's a it's psychological abuse it really is and and uh we were still able to get out on some trails the first few days and run around with some folks it was odd though vendor day is wednesday and we had great weather for the vendor show which was perfect of course but um to go out on the trail for four or five hours come back to camp run basically from the jeep into the tent and then stay in the tent for you know until it got dark so you could go to sleep it's mm -hmm. kind of dysfunctional yeah yeah no bueno. yeah no 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 bueno no, no. that's well, that's too bad is no, that the and, first? I mean, all the years you've been going to all for fun. Is that the first time you've had that kind of weather? Um, it it typically rains, uh, like for a day or an afternoon, but not continuous Con like continuous that. Continuous rain. Um, and you know, everybody, we all need we all need weather. We all need the rain, and it's so dry and the fires. So it was kind of a welcome thing, but um, you know, all for fun this year was was different. Uh, it was a lot smaller um and and literally the the uh the permit process for the mile high jeep club was a little different this year in fact they didn't receive permits for some of their their trails and whatnot until a few days before the event so again all these events are really working through all of these new guidelines and restrictions and doing their best um you know and and, and clubs are also struggling to how do they keep their members involved and the evolution of a, of a Jeep club? It's, it's a, uh, it's a challenge. I get it. Um, it's no different, you know, some, some place like uh, some club like Cal four wheel where they have so many members and so many active participants. Um, some of these other clubs are really struggling. Yeah. Well, Cal four wheel, you know, is an association of clubs, right. And even then amongst the little various clubs that it's, 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 problematic in fact right now is sierra trek so mm -hmm. sierra trek is going on it started pretty much at the beginning of the week it's kind of an all week but the real meat and potatoes of the event starts tomorrow or i mean today thursday today yeah in fact, will yeah. will went out wednesday night to see if he could stage at the bottom of of um fordyce because that's the big trail right for a lot of people in fact our you know, Kevin and Brittany and some of our other friends after Jeepers Jamboree went, went and ran Fordyce and showed that that trail off, which is incredible. But one of the greatest opportunities to do Fordyce is doing it during Sierra Trek because you have teams staged at all five windshields. So right. it makes it easier to get through. And if you have to winch up, they're ready to take you and pull you up. Um, after you try it a couple of times, and, you know, I've already told guys off, you know, my stories on Fordyce and, and one of these days we'll get back there and conquer it. But so Will went up today, but yeah, today, tomorrow and Saturday and the vendor show really is Friday and Saturday. Although most people just come out and do the vendor show on Saturday. So we did a big sponsorship of Fordyce this year, including bonfire signs and sponsoring the bar and sponsoring the cups and sponsoring the shirts and blah, blah, blah. So, cool. um, but that's going, but it takes a lot to be able to do that kind of event and it's big enough that our friends from bfg uh, tim cromer is out there this year although people should be aware to get to fordyce it is a couple mile long easily a couple of miles uh probably longer than that drive from the road on a long dirt road back to finally get to this lake and to um and to 
I think it's Meadow Lake out there, um, to be in the camping area. That road can sometimes be fine. That road can many times be not fine. So, like I saw the rig that Tim Cromer was bringing out with his big truck and the dually and whatever and the and the big DFG trailer. I'm assuming he was planning on taking that all the way out there. Not fun. Not yeah, fun no. to do. Not on that <laughs> road. It's it's and it's it's a uh, it is a big big deal. But he was picking up uh, Jake from Jake. Carter Tracks. Yeah. Yeah. They're mapping yeah. Fort Ice. So. Yep. So, and going and done that run, which is great. Um, uh, they actually already mapped Fort Ice. So while I think they're just going out there to pro to enjoy it, because he he mapped yeah. Fort Ice. We sponsored that back did. when they first came out. Um, I don't think they've released that one yet, though. Have I they? think it's on. So yeah, I, I think BFG is promoting their new app, mm-hmm. um, their their mm-hmm. navigation app. Yeah. That, um, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> That's what episode was that we discussed it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a little while ago. Um, and it's, oddly enough, I just did, and I didn't even think about this. I just did an article on modernjeeper.com a little bit about some of the navigation aids and, and apps and tools that are out there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I've still got it sitting here on my desk. Um, I don't know if any of our readers remember these, but, um, this was a, a Garmin, uh, GPS. It's the, uh, it's the GPS map 60 CSX, which this is, was kind of the, the standard. Um, I, I use this for a number of years. We used to I plug it into my laptop and download some topo maps on it. And, uh, you know, it would only hold, you could get SD cards for them and, and that kind of thing. But looking at the, the screen and the graphics on, on something like this, that's, you know, many, many like years a old. Finder, fish finder. <laughs> yeah. This was really, again, it was really cool. You could leave uh breadcrumbs and, and look at a topo yeah. map, but our phones now uh, being small supercomputers, make these devices kind of obsolete in a way. Um, and it's of course, fossil. software with Cardo tracks and, and all of these mm-hmm. apps, Gaia and, and all of them. Um, check out modernjeeper.com for that article. But yeah, I don't know where 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 we've come, where we've been. Um, mm. I guess it's like dial up versus high speed internet. It's a fossil now. It is. It's And it's it is kind of crazy because it is. I had a watch. I had a watch version, a little Garmin watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On a rest. And it didn't do much, but just tell you that you're going on the right path. Right. And heck, it's, it's pretty much similar to the fish finders we were using um, on Ultra 4 Racing. Yeah, right? very you much so. Fish, you essentially had the fish finders on there. Um, and the Lo- Lo- Lawrence. Yep. Great systems, but all you were doing is following a path. And they've gotten better. And now it's like you have more details and topographical details but when you're sitting there navigating you have just the cheap version you're going we're off the road go look no we're off okay back 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 now we're back on the path okay we must be in the right location (laughs) yeah it's um again it's that whole technology thing our one of our partners rugged radios uh greg and them they just released their new m1 radio that um i think is gonna it's a great race radio for racers it's built by racers right um again it's a huge advancement in where we've come from it's just um i don't know sometimes the technology can be confusing because people the early adopters um which i'm i'm usually up there in the front i want to i want to know about stuff sometimes we jump too far in and 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 we just confuse the issue um rugged's new radio I'm I'm guessing they're going to sell a ton of them. Guess what? They're not for the everyday jeeper driving down the road. They're business band radios. So, um, yeah, so they I do don't know. They, they released their M1 is using the original technology, not using the GMRS. Correct. Yeah. So it may. So you know, you got to put it on a company like that to actually make sure you're selling it to the right person. So somebody calls in and says, "Hey, I, hey, I want the new, I want a new race radio." The right. M1, yeah, that's not what you want, sir. You want to have this over here. Right. Yeah, that'll yeah. be interesting to see. But technology-wise, I mean, you know, they're they're manufacturing now a significant portion of that radio. They're using other people's uh, components, but they're doing a lot of the machine work and the, the aluminum cover, apparently, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, 
better better uh, receivers, better better transmitters, all of those pieces parts are are coming along. It's like everything. It's like everything we do. It's like uh, everything that Metal Cloak builds. It's nice when you're you're not huge and you don't rely on everything being pushed on you from overseas. You actually have some manufacturing in house and you can go, hey, we need to make changes on these things and make them better. Um, which we've, ne you know, Metal Cloak's never stopped doing that. So exactly, and that's been our, you know, our biggest challenge right now is it's better to have a challenge of trying to find raw materials mm -hmm. than waiting and suffering because, well, oh, something just came over in a shipment. And now that shipment is sitting at the port for two, three weeks before it actually gets unloaded and properly sent over. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy for the companies that we know and we have friends that depend on stuff being imported and they're super slow and suffering right now because they simply can't get their inventory. Right. Right. Yeah. We're seeing that. I mean, well, we've all seen it as we, even if you're not even into the jeeping world or camping or anything like that, if you go to your local Walmart or, or I don't know, outdoor recreation place, you'll see mm -hmm. that the selection is pretty limited and inventories are low. Um, you know, even it's just, it's interesting in Colorado right now because there are so many people traveling and on vacations and the, these little towns, like where All for Fun was held this year in, in Leadville, little bitty towns that have, you know, a handful of restaurants, they can't support an extra couple thousand people and they're having to figure out ways to do it. So, yeah. yeah. And it's a challenge because is this the new world and do you invest in order to be able to solve that new world? Or if you make investments into it and then that everything goes back to normal, whatever that is. Right. Um, where does where do you end up being so it's a challenge it's definitely a challenge there for everybody trying to get into things and do it all i know is i love that people are out yes. i love that people are traveling i love that people are saying effort and actually getting out and doing stuff and not just suffering in their homes um some of them obviously there's a whole nother side of the population that would rather suffer in their homes right. um to you i say get out get out get out <laughs> <sighs> So we are, um, we're in the middle of packing back up again. We have uh, a couple of events coming up. Um, our, our friends at Milestar are actually, this is going to be their third. It's the XPDN3. And Ooh. it's kind of funny when I, when I saw it, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put it together. I'm like, XPDN. Expedition. Expedition. And <laughs> as Martin would say, it's, it's like expedition, but you know, it's hip. It's hip. Yeah. It's hip. It's hip. So Expedition 3 um, is coming up in West Virginia. So uh, that'll start next week. Looking forward, it's going to be a great group of guys. Uh, Chris Durham, uh, one of our friends from Durham Motorsports, he's bringing a number of guys out. Awesome. Um, and, Eric of course, and Cora. Eric and Cora from, from, um, Torque, lockers. from Torque Lockers. And, uh, gosh, I don't know. We've got some... Uh, some people from uh, Torque Masters, of course, uh, Trail Gear, uh, Matt Messer, and those guys I haven't seen Matt on, in a number of years. Uh, Lonnie McCurry and the guys from Skyjacker. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, they're they're going to be out. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. I think that it's going to be another one of the uh, more cultural um, experiences not so much an extreme wheeling event mm -hmm. again i think that's more important that we all get out and see each other and, and share uh experiences there's a lot of adventures going on right now i i just saw some stuff um i think the jeep jamboree usa event is on the rubicon this weekend um i think bob from tnt his he's morrison trail he's doing morrison jeep trail uh this weekend Oh, he um, is, huh? Yeah. Smoke here. I, uh, I can't imagine being up there right now because of the smoke. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they all have, they have smokeless uh, weather. Yeah, it was one of my concerns about Sierra Trek up there right now, too, because they've got the fires going on in Reno. Yeah. we got the fires going up in Dixie. we got the, um, you know, it, it, it's just insane right now. California's burning. Reno's burning. It's just, it's. 
it's uh, I don't know, but being outside and but it fluctuates. It's one of these where today it looks like a bad day. Today it's I'm looking out my window and it has that hazy overcast look to it, right? Right. Yesterday it was beautiful and blue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just a wind shift change happens and all of a sudden, you know, here in the valley that Sacramento is in, it just settles right in. It's well, been really bad. It's been bad, 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 and, bad. And I'm looking outside now and it looks a little hazy, but you're right. When the wind changes and we, we want some breeze to blow the smoke out, but we don't want the breeze because then I'm sure that just fuels the fires. Right. Um, yeah. Blah. But so and it's I, been hot. It, it has been I mean, extremely hot. And you guys have been hot too. Has been just oh, like God, a it's been ridiculous. It's, it's it's like it's crazy. And now it is August, and August is usually hot. August right. September hot. But it's funny for me because I'm indoors so much. Like I'm in the house, right? And I'm stir crazy in the house. Can't really go, you know. Tomorrow I get the <laughs> sutures off the leg. And once and then I get the hard cast, and then I can actually be free again, right? I have a knee scooter with nice big knobby tires on it so I can nice. go around the neighborhood with the kiddos. I'm just itching to use that thing. Um, it's kind of funny, though. I get to get on it, and I'm adjusting it because the brakes aren't quite right. And it's like like just sitting on the floor of my butt with a little toolkit trying to fix this thing. <laughs> but it's, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's great to get out and, and do it. But it just I go out. All of a sudden, I open the door, and it's like, holy crap, it's hot. Yeah, you know, yeah. Seventy six degrees inside of the house gets uh, gets gets you, you forget what it can be like. Well, and I'm kind of nervous because the next event, of course, is the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and it's typically so it's gonna I'm it's gonna be hot and it's gonna be humid. And uh, John Slayton's coming out for that, gonna help us out at the at the the, the CTI trailer in the booth. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be a busy, busy event, but mm -hmm. um, hopefully it'll cool off a little bit. Mm. Yeah. We've just been yeah, fixing well, my boo-boos. You'll have Curtis out there. You're going to have uh, Philip. Yeah. Philip will be out, Philip. out there. Yeah. We'll probably have some uh, Metal Cloak guys come out there. They were interested in putting up the Metal Cloak. Or oh, the Owner's Club. Club. Yep. And oh. we were like, just come to us and hang out with us we don't have to sure. see you you come on that'll be fun that'll yeah be fun. so yeah cool what's uh it's a, it's a great event everybody if you haven't tried that one and you're on that side of the world it gets it's a it is a phenomenal um it's a phenom as far as yes. what, what mm -hmm. happens so it's it is a selling event pigeon forge is is great for families um it's it's definitely a destination um lots of things for kids to do and all of that uh it's a it's a selling event it is a busy event i mean we watch people wheel dollies of of boxes uh, from <laughs> vendors at yeah. that event um bring yeah so money, and then after, bring the deals yeah that's right that's right and so after that we're coming back to colorado where we're getting ready for our our next modern jeeper adventure which is going to be right here right here in the san juans what are the dates for that again that's a good question it's at the um, end of <laughs> It's it like is the 20 the date is the actual date is um, um the 23rd yeah 23rd September right. 23rd through the 26th there's a few spots on open guys so yep yep make sure to sign up cuz you know sign up early it helps determine how Corey's going to set up his compound that's right that's right <laughs> after i fix my jeep your jeep what wrong with your being jeep? a brat Oh yeah, we well, had some we had some overheating issues on, on Holy uh, Cross. Holy Cross. It was interesting on the way back down for sure. Wow. And then I had to fix my leaky rear end because I bashed the bashed that in pretty good on Holy Cross too. Thank goodness for the diff diaper <laughs> yeah. though. I think it would have it would have been a number on that cover. So I made a bit pretty good dents in it. <laughs> That's what skid plates are for. Yeah. That's right. Skid plates don't look good when they're just shiny. They need to have no. character added to them. That's no, right. Mine's got a lot of that going on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, here I am. What do I got? I got three kids. So we watch a lot of, there, there were some Facebook posts recently about like, what, what movie have you seen at least 10 times? And I'm like, well, let me go through every friggin' Disney movie out there that I've <laughs> right? seen probably 20 times because I have kids. Uh -huh. But, you know, in Cars, in Cars mm -hmm. 2, Mater talks about the dents that he keeps because they're a story. 
right? Oh, so right. That's true about your diff covers. Your diff covers are stories. Yeah. Um, did you, yeah, yeah, I did that one on Ford Ice going up windshield three, and then you know, you know, it's 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 the beauty of them. You look Don't at just it. waiting on parts. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it's, you know, it's stuff that um, not even O'Reilly's. So it's a fan relay basically that we discovered that is giving her fits oh, and no. it's not a part. It's a Mopar part. It has to come it's from a whole Mopar because it's harness. a, it's actually a, an interesting relay that has a temperature thing on it and all this stuff. Well, it's got to come from Mopar. Yeah. That's 10 days. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. It's coming from Detroit. They said, but I'm right. They're going, Oh, we have to go through Denver. That's not going to fly. Cause you know, Glenwood's a mess still. We still have a lot of roads in Colorado that have had uh, mudslides and whatnot. So we're traffic, getting there. Um, uh, they actually kind of interesting. So I 70 has been closed since July 29th from the Western slope into Denver um, because of mudslides in Glenwood Canyon. Well, they're saying they're going to, it was interesting. So Highway 50, which is near us here in Montrose, that goes kind of that direction. It goes over to the front range. That canyon has been under construction and it's only open for about two hours in a day. Um, and there's little windows you have to get there and wait in line and hopefully you get through. Wow. Well, since Glenwood's closed because of the mudslides, they halted construction on 50 to let traffic go around because it's like a two and a half, three hour diversion to go around this mudslide. Um, they stopped construction in on 50 to allow that road to be open now all the time. So Glenwood's supposed to reopen on Saturday, this Saturday. So I'm sure construction will restart on 50. And so people uh, won't be able to go that way again. It's oh. yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It's a mess. It's it that is. whole phrase that was popular for a little while until it became uh, abusive, which was, you know, oh, first world problems, first world problems, right? The thing is, 2020, 2021 have all been about these first world problems. I can't right. get my stuff. Well, yep. okay. Yeah, I, I can't. You know, we don't have inventory. We don't have this. It's like, we're. I think we're still blessed to live in a great country. There's Absolutely. a whole political statement we can go down there, and there's a whole world. You know, you notice, listeners, we have not been talking politics. Mm, you notice we haven't no. talked politics. <laughs> uh, it's 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 it is a uh, it's I don't know. There's a, but I'm glad. So what, going back to your Jeep because that's what's important. So is it going to get fixed in time? For oh yeah, um, yeah. by the time we get back, they should have my part. It just okay. snaps in. It's not a big deal. But so you'll, be, you'll have um, it. You'll be set to go. We had to hotwire it on the way home because <laughs> it just wouldn't stay on. It was temperamental. <laughs> we got off the trail. It would come. The fan would come on. The fan would go off. It would start spewing stuff everywhere. It was mm. quite an interesting time, but. Yeah, it'll it'll snap in. It should be fine. I've got everything else fixed. I got some other stuff going in the Jeep to help with some heating issues inside the Jeep that I'll be putting up as well from one of our awesome friends at Armor Light. Yeah, nice. it turns out um, everybody <clears throat> thinks it's a great idea to take the interior out of your Jeep so you can hose it off. Well, you almost need to hose it off um, like all the time because <laughs> then the your feet will melt to the floor. Um, yeah, all of that heat protection and whatnot, the floor of a of a it's tub hot. gets hot. Hot, hot. Right. So yeah. yeah, I've been working on that and you know, trying to get ready for Rim Rocker and all of the other events that are coming up. So Yeah. Well, we had a something I remember something got destroyed in the back of the JK, like back back in the early days before it had the big uh LS and the App Hammy. Just because we did a relocation of, I think we put a Magnaflow or one of the other um, uh, you know, exhausts, but we did the relocation where the exhaust was pretty much under the driver's side rear seat, the back seat. And it made that floor hot, yeah. hot, hot, hot. It didn't matter. I think we had something down there that ended up getting like destroyed because it pretty much melted. Um, 
on the floor. <laughs> and you, you know, you ultimately learn about that stuff and oh, let's put some protection there because that Jeep didn't put any protection there because they didn't expect mm -hmm. to have a muffler sitting there underneath the seat, right? Right. Speaking of, of Jeeps and expectations, though, interesting news is our, our um, Will is going through the process of having his his uh, reprogramming done by guys over at HP Tuner. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like when he gets it back, it's his little 2.0 turbo is going to end up being like 350 horsepower. Nice. Like, so it adds like 75 horsepower and uh, foot pound of torque. Um, I don't wow. know if he needs that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Of course he does. <laughs> oh, we all need it, but <laughs> but to have this little to have this 2.0 liter turbo coming out with 350 horsepower, that's uh, it's pretty insane. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, 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 uh, I'm a. I have a different mindset. I <laughs> you start screwing with that stuff, I guarantee you, Jeep knows they can get more power out of these engines. Sure. Keep screwing with the programming and keep turning them up, and I guarantee you, there's going to be a failure somewhere else. Axel. That's the fun. That's the fun of it. That's the <laughs> when fun he's of doing the, the burnouts. Go no do burnouts. Failure burn. here. Add a thing there. I mean, you figure for a rig like that, it's been built with that idea in mind: fusion axles and everything else, right? <clears throat> uh, but it's just it's just fun to see, right? And what I love about it is guys in my own shop that are doing that to their rigs, so I can live vicariously through them. Yes, yes. I, I love when people modify their stuff because then later I can go, oh, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> um, speaking of Acquisitions. Which, Acquisitions. Yes, yes, speaking of which. So the big news was our buddies over at Warren now are the proud owners of Fab Fours. Now, there have been a lot of things I could have seen and maybe predicted, but that was not one that I would mm -hmm. ever predict. Factor 55 made sense. Fab tech, eh, not so much. Fab fours, are you kidding me? So first off, it's a triple F. The, right? the three Fs. I, I, so we need to go through the industry and look at other companies that start with F and see who yeah. Warren will acquire next. Yeah, not just ones that are called things that start with F. Right. <laughs> Exactly. It's just it's kind of funny this chain of events that they've they've done over there, right? And so but Fab Fours, which is primarily, you know, we know it, we see it a lot in the Jeep world now because of the Grumper and the right. Vital and this crazy like off the beaten path, uh, out of the box thinking uh, stuff that they created. But they're primarily a bumper company. I mean, they're I I've heard before from employees that their number one product is a Ram truck bumpers, that that's what they just flies off the shelf and they can't keep in stock. So Warren to bring that in. Now, on the flip side, from medical from a medical cloak standpoint, our good friends at Warren are now purely competitors with the Fabtech line of products. And they, you know, so it's that's that's a whole nother game. But we still love Warren. We still love their products. We still love our, our friends over there. And there are you know, some worn rigs and personal rigs of worn employees that are metal cloaked out, not fab teched out or fab right. pours out. Right. But that being said, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, w where do you see this going for worn? Are they going to become like best top and keep acquiring it? Was this, this is the, is this the game? Maybe so. You know, you start looking at profitability and looking at spreadsheets and going, yeah, this would be, you know, maybe, you know, Warren also makes quite a few truck bumpers and maybe they want to um, not eliminate a competitor, but they liked what the spreadsheet looked like from Fab Fours. And they went, hey, we can incorporate these into our own product lines and have that bottom line come back to us. So, um, you know, I, I again, with all these companies, just like Factor 55, I'm they they've still let these companies do their own things. They still exist as their own proprietary or, or their own businesses um so yeah who knows maybe they're just like you said they're becoming a uh, a holding company for for other companies yeah that's and that's you know there's different ways to acquire right we, the the ars um, acquisition or what was kms acquisition for us was an asset acquisition which meant we got none of the people 
none of the productivity, none of the company. We just got the drawings, the product, the inventory, and had to fully take it over and manage it ourselves. Um, some of the acquisitions early on, especially of Daystar, um, that Daystar was doing when that, that was happening over there, those were asset acquisitions right. where they were acquiring that. So they had to bring in, they weren't bringing in the people, they weren't buying the company as much as they were buying the product, the drawings, the engineering, and the name. And which meant immediately, what what are they doing? Well, they're they're manufacturing. They're doing a better job of manufacturing in house the product as opposed to just having a company. But you're right. The Warren acquisitions, Factor Fifty Five, um, Fab Tech, uh, Fab Fours, is an acquisition of a company where everybody that was part of that company is still there. Right. Right. Um, they're still there. They're still working. They're still building their company. They're still having involved invest involvement and investment and focus on making that company better. So, um, it will be, that'll be good. And, and again, it's probably part of this whole game that you're seeing you, because best Daystar was doing it directly, but they're their own company. And then they, they had great partnerships with the investment bank behind them. And now the investment bank pretty much owns everything and it's DPI what is it dpi off-road products or something is the is the new name best top did it right they were acquired and then they became the primary for the off-roading acquisitions and then right. warren was acquired and now they are the primary for the off-roading acquisitions so it's an interesting game that people are playing with that and there's a lot of acquisitions going on uh you know and that's for we sure keep saying we keep saying no 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 no, don't bother sending us a letter. We're not interested. Well, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because it's like, uh, I don't know, we, we had this conversation about uh, some of the overlanding products that are out there. And and there's really three places in the on the planet that stuff's made. And it's China and it's Australia. And, and I think some stuff comes out of, of, of South uh, Africa as well when it comes to like rooftop tents and those kind of things. Well, what's funny is how many companies um, have a rooftop tent and there's just subtle differences in all these tents. Well, they're all made in the same place. They just have their own little, oh, we had an extra pole. We have a different canvas. Ours is a different color, those kind of things. Yet there's just one manufacturer and there's four companies that all buy from that single manufacturer mm -hmm. and they just tweak all of those products a little bit to make them their own. Right. Um, yeah. It's an interesting perspective. <laughs> like you'd think at some point the manufacturer, like, like metal cloak would say, Hey, here's our product. But no, these are, these are different manufacturers. These are manufacturers providing to, for companies to go do their own thing. Um, well, it, it's the, it's, it's how easy it is to get into a marketplace if you have some capital to buy inventory, right? Um, look at the look at the uh, the gears, the gear yeah. industry, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's only there's, a so, few places that do forgings. So. Yeah, only a few places in the world. Most of the gears, whether you're um, where you're, whether you're Sierra or Yukon or any of the others, most of those are coming from the same factory, right? Um, it's and it's it's. If you know the game, you call up, you get your new things, you get new going. But your problem is those factories are overseas. And can you get your inventory? Can you get your container? What are your container fees? I mean, for anybody out there looking at stuff and wondering why prices are going up, well, it's because every bit of cost between, even for us, the acquisition of raw materials to actually getting it out the door every step in that process has gone up whether Absolutely. it's the labor cost in california to to have somebody on which is great i love our people um to the the cost of the materials being four times what it used to be and then we're talking simply a matter of six to eight months it's gone up that much and mm -hmm. to and it's because everybody's dealing with the same thing we've raised our prices you raise your prices by the way that is the definition of inflation Yep. I'm well, trying to do, uh, go ahead. We, we've, we've, uh, there, there's more and more talk, um, about how we, 
uh, how we do business and the costs associated with doing it. Right. Right. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know where, when it starts to change. Everything is a cycle, just like real estate. These companies that right now to buy a house, you're paying top dollar to buy an RV. You're going to pay top dollar right. used cars, top dollar, yep. but everything's a cycle. And there's been conversations uh, with people at events going, yeah, you want to buy a boat or an RV? Wait a couple of years because they're going to be giving them away because this will come back around and and people will go, oh, I thought we were going to keep doing this going mm -hmm. uphill and, and, and everything was increasing in value. I'm going to make more money so I can afford these bigger payments. And then when thing takes a correction, all of those play toys, all of the ATVs and the motorcycles and the boats and the RVs, all of that stuff all of a sudden has to go up for sale because they can't make payments anymore. Um, yeah, it'll be it, interesting. It will be interesting to see because like, you know, we're in the process of trying to buy a house with some land, right? And right now in California, you're paying top dollar yeah. and I hate it, but it's, it's everywhere. Time. It's just, it's time. And you're going to pay top dollar for it. It's, it's, you know, and the flip side of it is part of the decision making for us because whatever we get isn't exactly going to be the way we want it. So we're going to have to do some additions, right? I have to put an ADU on the property. I have to, um, I want to make sure I have a shop on the property. There's all this stuff you got to do. But the problem is the cost to build is also a top dollar. Right. Right. So you're talking 300, $300 a square foot to do additions or at, I mean, that's 300 grand if you just want to put a thousand square foot addition onto your house. $300,000. Right. Right. I, I, you know, I, I can't afford that. So I can, I can get a mortgage that I can afford the payment on to be able to, to get the property I want. But then to say, okay, now I'm going to pull in my pocket and pull out 300 grand cash and go ahead and, you know, make these additions and changes. Uh, I'm talking, well, I've talked to two different. That's that that's that um, that scale where right now people can also afford to buy more because interest rates are so low. So if they're borrowing money, um, you know, money's cheap right now. Two and a half percent. That's like right. who, who would have ever thought? So the prices can get more expensive because that's the same payment when interest rates start to come back up when they're five percent again, which I yeah. guarantee you at some point they will be. Those home values have to come down. Same payment. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then, of course, it's the beauty of California having no um, having uh, prop what we call Prop 13, which limits our property taxes um, to be at the point of the acquisition. That doesn't go up every year. There's oh. limitations in how much it can rise every year. So oh. um, you if you buy a house, if you have a house that was two hundred thousand dollars and it's worth a million dollars now you're paying very low property taxes because it's, it's anchored off the original purchase price. Wow. That's so it doesn't just it doesn't go through this in assessment. There's still a raise that happens annually, but it's a very small raise anchored off that original purchase price. Gotcha. Um, so it's, but then if I buy a property and I spend $800,000 or a million dollars on that property, whatever, all of a sudden I'm paying the property taxes at that level. That's fine because it's the purchase price happens, the change happens, ownership happens, title change, all that brings it. So the flip side of it is it's nice because we you can ha live in a million dollar property that may be worth two million dollars in five years or 10 years or whatever it is. And you're only paying the property taxes on that million dollars, which allows, I think, the escalation of pricing and the the, um, yep. the in California versus our house in Oregon where it's property taxes are different in Oregon. And the and so our house there has grown in value, but at a lot slower rate than you would expect sure. based on, sure. on just supply and demand. Well, and real estate is definitely one of those. I mean, I it's funny. We buy a house expecting it to increase in value. Um, we've We've been pretty fortunate for the past 20 years. There was a blip there in 2008 where things corrected. But for the most part, things have gained in value. When we buy a Jeep and we spend 70 grand on it, when we go to sell it, we don't get to sell it for 80. No. Like no. that doesn't, that's not how this works. Um, it only works with Rolexes and, and Hartleys. 
<laughs> right. Whereas I think a lot of people go, well, no, this is an investment. It's an investment in your happiness. Mm. Um, it's, it's giving you something to do and taking you outside so that you can enjoy life. Um, but there's a cost of that. Whereas I love, you know, some of these rigs that are 25 years old and people are going, yeah, I'm going to sell it for 40 grand. Wow. Um, good luck. Um, right. you know, well, I've got a hundred <laughs> into it. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I yeah. understand that, but you know what? There's a buyer out there too, for all of that stuff, there which, is. you know, I, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, you, you sold Spike and you got it, you know, you sold them to a friend and yeah. um, you might, you got a decent price for them. And um, there are people out there, the right person can be found to buy the right Jeep. And I've seen that we've seen it before. And, and people know that if they send us a link, if they post their, their Jeep for sale, that is metal cloaked out, we'll throw it on our Facebook page and sure. just share it out there for people and help you sell your, your Jeep. If you have to sell it for some reason. Right. Um, but it's, it is. You see, if people have different comments back and forth of, "Hey, uh, forty-five grand for this Jeep? Oh my God, what the guy think? Is it painted in gold? Well, he did have medical parts, so that's not <laughs> the case, right? Yeah. So, I, uh, you know, I think we were planning on doing a little short episode, and it's actually gone a little bit longer than we were thinking. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's good to catch up and and good to uh, to reach out and see what our our followers and our listeners are doing and hopefully we get to run into them at an event. Hopefully they're all outside Wheeler. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully everybody's get a chance to get out there. Like you said, there's tons of events going on. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys, all of our listeners having a chance to go out there, get wheeling, get out there, get on the trails, spend your weekends or your week or whatever you're doing, doing stuff. I'm doing something this weekend that I've never done before, but I'm doing it for the kids and it's going to be a lot of fun because I, I've, I, I've never been to one and we are going to monster jam. Oh, so, how fun. That's so, awesome. Uh, Yay. It'll be a little interesting though, because see our, 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 my business partner, Doug, his family owns a private box in golden one, uh, arena. So golden one center, I guess it's called. So we have a private box. We've been there before and we've seen frozen and Disney on ice there with kiddos, but we're taking them into the private box to watch monster oh, jam. Yeah. And That'd be awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. And so it'll be interesting. <laughs> you can hear a little voice. Yeah, Josh okay. decided to come on in here and, and start uh, start chatting. Good morning, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, buddy. <laughs> All right. So it'll be fun. I'll, I'll Next week, I'll give a report of Monster Jam and have the kiddos handle it cool. and, and the excitement there. Otherwise, for all of our listeners out there, we will see you on the trails. Cheers. See ya. And there. Uh, there <laughs> Good morning, is. Joshua. My Good morning. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh.